Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Brenton Chu and I am an AI developer technology engineer at NVIDIA. Today I would like to talk about optimizing inference for neural machine translation using Sockeye 2. Here is the agenda for this presentation. First, I would like to provide a brief introduction to the problem of neural machine translation. Next, I will give an overview of the Sockeye framework and its successor, Sockeye 2. Following that, I will touch upon profiling with N-Site systems and how such profiling can help when optimizing a GPU application. I will then discuss my optimization strategy and provide a few examples of the optimizations that I have done to improve Sockeye's performance, namely multi-head attention, model state beam sorting, and beam search data type. Finally, we will observe some results of the performance we can now achieve using Sockeye for NMT on the G4 AWS instance. What is neural machine translation? Neural machine translation is the task of using neural networks to translate a piece of text from one language to another. Modern solutions typically use what is called an encoder-decoder architecture, where there are two models that work together to translate the provided text. The encoder model first translates a time series input into an intermediate representation. The decoder model then uses the encoded input to sequentially produce output tokens until the resulting text is completely translated. As part of the decoding, a method known as beam search is often employed to find the most optimal translation from a set of candidates. At each step of decoding, multiple candidate sequences are kept track of and given to the decoder and ranked depending on how well they are translating the text so far. At the end, the sequence that is determined to be the most likely translation is given back as the final output. This method allows a sequence that might not appear as the best translation at first, but ultimately becomes an excellent translation to still be considered as the decoder progresses through the sequence. Here I have provided a visual on how an encoder-decoder model translates text during inference. The input sequence, which is the text in the source language, is given to the encoder model to produce the encoded state. This encoded state is then given to the decoder model, which uses it to produce the first output token. Keep in mind that with beam search, this is not a single token, but a beam of multiple possible tokens. After ranking the likelihood of possible tokens, both the encoded state and the first output of the decoder is again provided to the decoder so that it can produce the second token. This pattern then continues until the decoder finishes translating the entire sequence. Now I would like to give an overview of Sockeye and Sockeye 2. Sockeye is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence framework specializing in neural machine translation that is built on top of MXNet. This applies for both Sockeye and its successor, Sockeye 2. It is open source and available for anyone to build from source or install as a PyPI package. You may also contribute to this project if there are any changes you would like to directly implement into Sockeye. Sockeye is easy to get started with and use, and you can tokenize text, train a model, and translate using a trained model directly from the command line without touching a single line of Python or C code. This also applies to customizing your model and specifying how you want to train and translate, which can be done by providing the appropriate flags. You can take a look at the Sockeye repository on GitHub yourself by following the link on this slide. Sockeye 2 is a recent update from Sockeye that was released earlier this year. Sockeye 2 has a number of fundamental changes that allow it to be more performant and easier to build on than before. First of all, Sockeye 2 now uses MXNet's Gluon API, which streamlines the process of building the models themselves. Sockeye 2 also cuts out RNN and CNN models to focus on using transformers for translation in order to get the most performance as possible for training and inference. Another change that helps boost performance is allowing automatic mixed precision and FP16 training and inference on GPU. For inference, the lower precision of FP16 allows for faster computation while still being precise enough to not hinder the quality of the translations. In training, 
Automatic Mix Precision, as the name implies, automatically determines which calculations can safely be done in a lower precision and which to keep in full precision so that the training process can be run faster while still staying accurate, getting the best of both worlds. Next, I would like to talk about NVIDIA's Insight Systems, which can provide in-depth profiles of a GPU application. While a full discussion of all the things you can do with Insight Systems would be too long to cover within this presentation, I personally find it very helpful in providing a visual understanding of the places where the code is performing suboptimally. Insight Systems is used for identifying parts of a GPU application that can benefit from optimization and provides both visual and quantitative analysis of the performance of kernel execution and memory transfers, among other things. For the purposes of this presentation, you only need to understand that a visual inspection of the timeline can reveal patterns that provide hints to where we can improve the performance of our code. Now, when trying to improve the inference performance of our transformer models for NMT, it is important to remember how the encoding and decoding process affects the relative impact and performance of different parts of the model. Inference can be split into three primary stages, the input encoding, decoding for output, and beam search, where the decoding and beam search steps are repeated for each output token. This means that an optimization that only improves the performance of the encoder without affecting the decoder or beam search would have significantly less impact on the overall process than one that does. Another good heuristic for optimization is minimizing time taken not doing meaningful computation, or in other words, operations like transposing, copying, or shuffling data. It is more likely that these operations are the ones that are not necessary and thus should be removed if possible. What kind of transposing, copying, or shuffling operations that are present in the decoder or in beam search can we remove? I will provide an example. Revisiting our previous screenshot of the Nsight Systems profile, one such pattern is highlighted here in gray. In this case, a large section at the beginning of the decoder is spent in reshapes and transposes, which are in red and light blue respectively, resulting in much time doing excess memory operations. The reason for this is that the generic calculations used for projections and attention require data to be formatted differently. And so after the data is projected with a fully connected layer, it needs to be transformed properly for the matrix multiplications associated with the attention stage to be applied to the correct elements. The attention layer thus proceeds as follows. An input projection is applied to the data before the heads are split out of the features, and then the multi-head attention, consisting of batched dot products and appropriate activations, is applied. At the end, the heads are combined again, which is essentially the inverse process of the transposes and reshapes that I have described earlier, before another projection is applied for the output. In order to remove the reshapes and transposes, the batched dot product needs to be aware that it needs to act on the data separately for each head. Since the general dot product operation cannot do this, a specialized one that does take this into consideration was implemented specifically for this purpose and added to MXNet. With that specialized operation now available, we can now remove all of the reshapes and transposes that were occupying the first half of the decoder pass by replacing the batch dot product with the appropriate function, prefixed by interleaved matmul, which indicates that the head dimension is still interleaved with the features when calling this matrix multiplication. For the next optimization that I will cover, we look again to the Nsight Systems profile timeline. At the end of every beam search step, the encoder and decoder states associated with each beam are sorted according to their score. This score indicates how likely the model thinks that each sequence under consideration is to be the most accurate translation. Like the reshapes and transposes in our previous optimization, the take operator used here to perform the sorting is not actively doing any calculations. 
but rather is moving data around. So if there are any opportunities to avoid some of that, we should take it. Since the encoder states are exactly the same regardless of the beam, we only need to perform the take operator on the decoder states, where the state order does matter for determining the top k beams at each beam search step. Thus, by allowing the model to identify which state is an encoder state or decoder state, we can reduce the time spent in this part of beam search by a factor of two. Up until now, in our profile, we have ignored an elephant in the room. And by elephant, I'm referring to the extraordinarily large amount of time spent in the softmax compute kernel. This kernel is used for the log softmax computation after the final decoder layer in order to determine the likelihoods of all possible tokens for the given time step. Now, why is this the case? This is because with older versions of MXNet, not all operators supported the FP16 data type. What this meant was that even when running model inference in FP16, the beam search step not involving the decoder would still run in FP32. Typically, when running inference in FP16, the MXNet safe accumulation flag is set in order to not lose precision in functions that sum over many small values. The softmax function falls under this category, and so when this flag is set, log softmax performs FP64 accumulation on FP32 input. The NVIDIA T4 GPU does not have the hardware to natively support FP64 calculations, and so performs very inefficiently when forced to work on double precision floating point values. Fortunately, more recent updates to MXNet have expanded the operators that support FP16 data, and thus we can convert beam search to use FP16 when the model does. That way, our T4 GPU will not have to struggle with working with FP64 values. With that, I would like to show how Sockeye, after all of our optimizations, performs on some AWS instances. Every instance used is the same model trained on the WMT dataset. When running inference with a batch size of 128, the translation throughput is 14 sentences per second on a C5 12x large CPU instance using FP32. If we switch to a G4 instance, which uses the NVIDIA T4, this jumps to 80 sentences per second. And if we switch to using FP16, which benefits the most from our optimizations, we observe a whopping 207 sentences per second. If we switch to testing latency over a single sentence with a batch size of one, we see that the C5 instance takes 242 milliseconds on average to translate one sentence while the G4 instance takes 107 milliseconds using FP32 and only 82 milliseconds using FP16. Keep in mind that the exact numbers for both throughput and latency will depend heavily on the length of the input and translation, as well as the size of the model. To conclude, in this presentation, I have shown that we have optimized sockeye transformer models primarily by one, removing unneeded data reformatting operations so the GPU can spend more time doing useful work, and two, moving the entire inference process, which includes the beam search step and not just the decoder, to FP16 for more efficient computation. We have also shown that the resulting FP16 inference on an AWS G4 instance has 2.6 times more throughput and 1.3 times less latency than just by using FP32. And when compared to a C5 12x large instance has 14.8 times more throughput and three times less latency. Now, if you would like to try out Sokka yourself, you can follow the guide that is listed here on this slide. Thank you for attending my presentation. I hope that you have learned much and are eager to try out Sokka 2 for yourselves after this. Thank you.